Hey guys, Meteorologist it's Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. Boy, what a scene this morning in Colorado. Look at this. As expected, Long's Peak got uh, just nailed with snow. I mean, what a beautiful sight. So Long's Peak, a 14er here in Colorado. I mean, you can see all the snow here uh, across uh, the, the, uh, the north face there of uh, Long's Peak. Guessing at least six inches. Probably closer to eight, maybe nine, ten inches. Just sort of triangulating that from some of the uh, reports I've seen. Um, let me take you up to uh, Winter Park. Um, this is an example of one of those, those reports I was using. But uh, So this is the snow stake up there at uh, Winter Park. I mean, you can see this has got five or six inches, and there was probably some compression of the snow. So it was probably closer to seven or eight at the peak of this. But that's Winter Park, and let me just show you. that It's really a stark contrast. So look at that view right there. That's up at uh, Lunch Rock, I believe. Yep, that's at Lunch Rock. I mean, just stunning right in the morning sunshine. But then you go down to the base area. There's town, nothing. You go, look at the base. It's sunny. You can see the lifts running in the fall color. I mean, so it's it was very elevation dependent. You see that all the time in the fall months. you got to be at a certain elevation or you just ain't going to get nothing out of it. And that's what we saw with this. But still a nice morning there at the base area. I guess you can play some putt-putt <laughs> down here. I don't see a windmill, but you can play some putt-putt. Probably do an alpine slide uh, as well. Um, let me show you the, uh, the radar here across the west. So we are high and dry now, nothing. The only action is down here in uh, California. We'll look at that here in a second. View in Colorado, so the area of low pressure is now out here. It has exited the state, so clearing skies with a northwest wind coming in, hoping to dry out the air. Now, here's the view in southern central California. It's this meandering uh, remnant moisture, tropical moisture. The low has moved back over the ocean, so it's grabbing a little bit of Pacific moisture, but this is all rain here moving through uh, a lot of central California, Monterey, San Jose, Sunnyvale, San Luis Obispo, moving up towards San Francisco. I want to take you back to Colorado and show you some of the uh, rain reports. These are 24-hour rain reports, and most places picked up about an inch here. So there's DIA, downtown Denver is right here at about an inch. Some places got more, over an inch. Um, up around the Boulder area, Broomfield, one to one and a half inches, the foothills over an inch. Um, and then up here in a lot of the mountainous areas, these are liquid equivalents. A lot of that falling is snow, though, above 10,000 feet. So very impressive. You know, this is probably one thirteenth to one fifteenth of a yearly total in the Denver metro area as far as rain. So this was a significant rain event for lower elevations of Colorado. Um, let me take you to my bullet points, just kind of talk briefly about what's coming. Um, so the next thing up on the list is going to be this in the month West Coast storm system, this dip in the jet, this area of low pressure that moves in from the Pacific, then it will move into the inner mountain. So it's going to throw some moisture into the inner mountain, we'll get some snow out of it. And here are your best odds of snow for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana and BC, I won't go through all the dates, but you can definitely see it that late month chance 928 2930 into the first of October. That's going to be a pretty common timeline uh, for most locations there across the West. Here is a water vapor satellite imagery this morning. So oranges and reds are your drier air. Your moisture's here in these whites and these blue colors. You can see that right there. So that's where the action is. This is our remnant tropical low. But boy, it is enveloped with a lot of dry air. And there goes our area of low pressure that is moving out of Colorado. So this uh, pretty significant area of low pressure will roll up into BC. Now there's another area of low pressure behind that, and that's what's going to be attacking or hitting the West Coast uh, at the end of the month. Um, so let me throw in the jet stream forecast here. I want to show you what this is going to look like. So this is your jet stream forecast. Uh, so, and we'll start this at lunchtime today on the clock, but where you see these bright colors, those are isotacks or um, those are wind, that's wind speeds up at about 30,000 feet. So this is jet stream level and those brighter colors correspond to higher winds. That's where you're going to see most of the jet energy. All right, let's move this ahead. All right, here we are early on Thursday, September 25th. 
Here's early Friday, September 26th. Here's early Saturday, the 27th. Here's early Sunday, the 28th. Here's early Monday, September 29th. A couple of things to talk about here. So most of the big jet energy is up here in Canada. You see these little areas down here kind of cruising with the southern branch through the continental, yes, but United States. But you can see what's happening right here. This is our larger West Coast storm, that dip in the jet, starting to take shape there along the West Coast. Let's move this ahead. Here we are early on third, Tuesday, September 30th. So Tuesday, September 30th, you can absolutely see the dip in the jet right here, area of low pressure. That's what's potentially going to drop some snow in the Sierra and then throw snow into the interior, 28, 29, 30 into the 1st of October. So that's the next big thing to affect the inner mountain. Here's early on Wednesday, uh, October 1st. You can see the jet energy here rolling across a lot of the inner mountain with snow potential. Here's early on the 2nd. Here's early on the 3rd of October. Most of the action is going to be up here, BC, Alberta, northern tier of states. Okay, let me just show you pressures. Middle of the atmosphere. This is today. So, for example, what we're looking at are atmospheric pressure anomalies, either high or low. So there's our area of low pressure that just exited Colorado. There's our remnant tropical low right there and a bunch of high pressure, higher than normal pressures up there in the northern tier. All right, let's move ahead. Now, this is Friday the 26th, so a few days from now. What do I see? Um, there's our remnant tropical low moving. It's kind of meandering into the, uh, the desert southwest, lower than normal pressures up here into a lot of B.C. and Canada. Um, okay, let's move ahead. So this is Tuesday the 30th, key time frame. Really cool things to show you here. There's actually two tropical systems, potentially tropical storm or hurricanes, dancing off the coast of the Carolinas. Not sure what's going to happen. This first one might make landfall, or it could get pulled around into what we call a Fujiwara effect with these two. They kind of dance. So that'll be an interesting setup. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But this is our big storm, big dip in the jet here, moving into the west coast. That's going to be the thing to watch. End of the month, early October could be a more active pattern, lower than normal pressures. Here's a time height forecast. Now this is for snow mass in western Colorado, Aspen snow mass up in the West Elks. One thing I see right away is it is going to be dry for at least the next 72 hours. So this is a current starting time and you move in this direction to look at the future. This is a slice through the atmosphere at all the layers. All of this orange and uh, yellow color, that is dry air through all the layers for probably the next three days. So it's going to be a waiting game now for the next storm system, certainly in western Colorado. Um, here's Berthoud Pass closer to the front range of Colorado along I-70 off uh, Highway 40 near Winter Park. This is up at about 12,000 feet. So um, you can see it brings a little itty bit of snow here, especially once we get into late month, early October. We start to move up to maybe four, four and a half inches there, the model mean, the ensemble mean. So there's nothing huge waiting in the wings for Berthoud Pass or Colorado, but certainly we could see some snow develop late September into early October. So that's next. Here's your 10-day snow forecast. There's that uh, snow, potentially end of month for the Sierra, and that could be up to six inches according to this this run, and there's a little bit of snow there for the high Uintas, some lighter snows for the mountain zones of Colorado, and maybe up to six inches for the Wind Rivers, and some decent snow here for southwest Montana, and even a little bit for Idaho. And again, that would happen later in the month when we start to get um, that next storm system, that big dip in the jet. And this is pr pretty good snow up here. This is well over six inches for BC, the coastal range in particular, interior BC. That, that comes in a couple of different waves, actually. You're going to have a pretty solid flow up there with a strong jet stream like I was showing you. Um, here's a zoomed-in map of this 10-day snow forecast. Um, and again, it's basically what we just talked about, maybe up to 6 inches there, high winters, some snow up there, the Wind Rivers, Yellowstone, Bighorns, and then a little bit of snow for the zones of Colorado. And again, most of that's going to be happening end of month, early October. 
So there you go, guys. That's what I'm looking at here, uh, potentially over the next 10 days. Um, we're just going to have to wait now. Once we've got, once this this storm system we just had moves out, that'll make way for the next one. It'll move into the west coast and then eventually into the interior. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.